Uh, we're on Leeches Crossing in Brendale, just north of Brisbane. We're at a, what was formerly a priority ranked barrier, number 11 in southeast Queensland, out of 13,000 potential fish barriers. Uh, as we have here, we've got a, a, a pedestrian causeway with a number of pipes, and we had a, a three to 400 mil drop off the end of the, the culvert apron, and uh, it was a significant barrier. Although it was small, it was having a huge impact on native fish populations within the South Pine River. It's, it's important because it was the first barrier in the system upstream from the estuary. Old fish undertake uh, migrations throughout their life cycle to reach feeding grounds or breeding grounds, but it's particularly important for those uh, diadromous uh, fish species, those migratory ones which spawn in the estuary and then the juveniles migrate up to fresh water. So the barriers stop that migration and that reduces fish populations. And we're talking some of the most important fish species in Queensland, really important recreational, commercial, indigenous fish species such as Australian bass, jungle perch, sea mullet, freshwater mullet, and longfin deals. So yesterday we came down, we put the fishway trap in just to monitor fish numbers to see how many we're getting. And yeah, pleased to say that we're, we're getting good numbers. We got uh, 1,200 fish yesterday come through, and the majority of them are juvenile fish, little fish, little sea mullet, 28 millimetres long, up to about 40 millimetres long. And these fish are the weakest swimmers. Um, they're not very good at negotiating high velocities, or they're not very good at jumping. Our fish. They're really, really lazy. They're not like Atlantic salmon that we see overseas where they jump up big waterfalls. Our fish need a rest in between. So that's what the fishway is designed to do is that we've got the little gaps in between the rocks where we've got a little bit of a high velocity. The fish use their burst speed, which they use just for a very short duration. They go really fast in between the slot and then they rest in the pool here where we've got a nice big resting area. They get their breath back, their energy reserves back and then they use their burst speed to go through the, the slot again and they reach the next pool. So it's like a set of underwater stairs each time. Yeah, sea mullet are extremely important uh, fish species. They're culturally significant to indigenous people. Re they're recreationally important and commercially important also. When the commercial guys catch them down in the beaches and in the estuaries, um, they process the, the whole fish. They use the, the eggs or the caviar that gets sent or exported overseas. The trunks or the fish, the whole, the whole parts of the fish that get sent uh, to Samoa and Tonga for food. Um, some of the fillets are remained in Australia for restaurants and fish and chip shops. The gut is used as fish bait. The heads is used as crab bait. So the whole fish is used. So it's a great sustainable success story. Well, the waterway is important, not just to me, but we've got the people that use it and enjoy it as a recreation. We've got watering for livestock and that. and. Um, the project itself, I think, has really improved what's happening with the fish and stuff. There's more fish than I knew were here, <laughs> but no, they've done good. It's, it, it seems to be working and looking at what they're doing today and catch, catching the numbers coming through means it's been a success. That'll be all the natives. That one, that one? Oh, that one's a fire tail, that's a native. There's a juvenile sea mullet. That's a flathead gudgeon. Another flathead gudgeon. There's a juvenile sea mullet recently spawned down in the ocean. Undertaking their upstream migration, the freshwater nursery habitats where they feed and grow before they migrate back down to the ocean to spawn. So we're looking for, we can already see, and the scientific evidence is there, uh, and the technical evidence is there that there's already an improvement in the movement of fish, of the species, and that's improving the habitat, and we're looking at that to build on that and, and uh, continue into the future. The engagement of local people, young people uh, getting involved in looking after this fish ladder and the habitat around it, cleaning it up because they want to catch the fish. Uh, now some of those they'll, they'll catch and consume but some of them will be catch and release. Uh, so when you find someone you can work with uh, and you do a project like this and it works well and it's trouble free and you get this benefit, well you'd be mad not to look to replicate that, so that, that's what we'll be looking to do. Here we've got uh, two types of barriers. Uh, the overall head loss or the overall barrier height here was 1.8 metres. We had two issues, we had one, we had a 50 metre long culvert with half a metre fall through the culvert. So we had a velocity issue when the water flowed through the culvert, the velocity was too fast, nowhere for fish to rest. And then off the apron down here, we had a 1.3 metre drop, vertical drop straight off the apron and we had a water surface drop barrier where fish couldn't jump up. So two different fishway designs to get fish past this barrier. We have a rock ramp fishway, 16 ridges at 80 mil drops each ridge. So fish go in between the gaps between the rock, 
get up into the pool, have a rest. And then through this long culvert here, we've got what's called a horizontal culvert baffle fishway, where basically we uh, pour in situ these horizontal baffles. They've got a small slot. We've got a low flow slot in the middle, a high flow slot on the outside. Um, the reason we've gone with this through the culvert is uh, we're in a, a highly urbanised area, built up area. We've got a main road here um, and we couldn't put to, uh, anything in, we couldn't back the water all the way through the culvert. So we had to put in these low baffles which can still convey water, uh, convey debris down the waterway, not cause any flood issues. And so far the results have been terrific with two and a half thousand fish coming through the fishway in one day. That's a Invasive pest fish tilapia, it's a bit unfortunate to get, but we get them in our urbanised streams in South East Queensland and these little fellas here. Juvenile sea mullet. These guys are striped gudgeons. They're the adults. And this one here's the, the juvenile, which is only recently spawned down in the estuary too, and they undertaken upstream migration. Both the adults come back and then the juveniles return to freshwater habitats. To an alva, which is Migrated uh, two to three thousand kilometres out from a trench between New Caledonia and Vanuatu. The adults go out there when they're over a metre long and they die, they spawn and die, and then the juveniles, such as this one, come back two to three thousand kilometres back into our freshwater waterways. It's a fantastic story. Mm. It's really important that they have fishways to enable them to migrate up past the barriers. They're very susceptible to velocity barriers. Healthy waterways it leads to a healthy land and healthy environment and uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island people are closely connected to the land. It's like our mother, it meets all our needs and well sea mullet is an important part of, of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders diet and in the Torres Strait uh, we have a, a mullet blessing ceremony for uh, babies in some of the islands. That's, uh, done by the elders and, and uh, they wipe the mullet over the body of the young baby for, uh, for good health. Um, Council were initially uh, part of the Fishway Prioritisation Program, uh, which we were approached by Catchment uh, Solutions to be part of, which looked at waterways across the whole of SEQ uh, and started to try and figure out which one of those were the biggest barrier to fish passage and prioritise them, uh, ranking them based on things like different uh, distances from the salt water, um, where they are in the catchment. Uh, from that we had a list uh, of which this one came about I think sixth across the whole of SEQ uh, South East Queensland. Um, so then we started talking to uh, Matt about potential projects within the Ipswich area and this one was pretty high on our list, say sixth on the list overall. So we were keen to try and do something. Um, prior to the, the passage being built this was a uh, a vertical drop weir here of about 2.4 metres, so just a, a solid concrete wall. Council gets uh, a report card from Healthy Waterways every year, and one of the parameters they measure is um, uh, native fish versus pest fish. We've opened up the, the, the waterway to more native fish, and a lot of those native fish need to be able to go up and down to be able to breed and to spawn successfully. So hopefully we'll see an increased number in, in our native fish species. So through the project, I got to speak to about three or four different community groups that are kind of fish focused or fishing focused that I didn't even know existed. So I was able to build those connections uh, with people like local stocking groups, uh, community who come out here and fish. We, it, was, uh, it got exposure on uh, forums and things like that. And there was a, a groundswell of support and that followed through to that because there was people interested in it, the politicians got interested in it. Uh, we actually had the mayor down here when we finished it, paddling in this bit here, rolled his, uh, rolled his trousers up and uh, got in there and was putting fish in the, in the water, um, which is something I could have never imagined for my projects. For the cost and the time frame that this was delivered, we've got projects that are half the size that take twice as long and cost three times as much. Um, to have the guys with the know-how doing the design, the little bit of co-funding, and again, their enthusiasm and will to see it happen, we were able to deliver something at a, at a really, really good cost, great efficiency, and, uh, and yeah, something that everyone really, really is happy to, to see in place. So overall, brilliant, brilliant outcome. The head loss or the barrier height was 2.4 metres, so the fishway required 33 ridges at 80 mils to get fish up. And as you can see, it's a dog leg fishway because we couldn't quite fit it in going straight down the waterway. Uh, we monitored this fishway last year and we got some terrific results. On average, we're getting 690 fish a day migrate up through the fishway. That couldn't have done it otherwise. That included 21 uh, species of fish, including 
four species that haven't been recorded in the Bremer River in 14 years of healthy waterways monitoring. Approximately 500 tonne of rock was used for this, some really, really big rock as you can see, between sort of six and eight tonnes, uh, anywhere up to about 2.8 metres. And the project uh, was funded by the Australian Government and Ipswich City Council and wouldn't have been possible without their great support. The fishway is extremely important for diadromous fish species, important commercial recreational indigenous fish species such as sea mullet, Australian bass, freshwater mullet and the endangered Mary River cod. Conservation stockings have occurred in this catchment to bring the population back, so we're hoping that the fishway will help reconnect habitats upstream and downstream and help safeguard that uh, restricted population moving forward into the future and also facilitate the upstream migration of Australian bass, which can only be good news for recreational anglers in the Bremer. This is a fantastic opportunity and a great resolve here for Council. We were so keen to get involved when we knew this was coming along. The community here are winners. Not only are the fish the winners, but we are the winners at the end. Council has contributed to this project here at a very minimal cost. We've given some time and, and support to the uh, teams that have been working on this project. It's been a win-win for everyone. We've counted nearly 200 fish per day. Just a magic uh, outcome for everyone. The fish and for our residents.